On Friday, the Daily Wire's co-founder, Jeremy Boring, announced that the company had ended their relationship with Candace Owens, and this is already proving to be a pretty nasty breakup, and you love to see it. Now, neither party has cited the specific cause for this breakup, but it's pretty obvious why this happened, and I think that we can all put two and two together. As of late, Candace Owens has been directly at odds with people at the Daily Wire, like Ben Shapiro, especially because of her criticism of Israel. Now, Ben Shapiro often conflates any and all criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism, and says that if you criticize Israel, you're anti-Semitic. And I think that that's dangerous because it cheapens actual anti-Semitism when they use it cynically like that to shut down criticism of a government's actions. Having said that, though, when people say that Candace Owens is anti-Semitic, not that Ben Shapiro has said this, but when people say that Candace Owens is anti-Semitic, there actually is merit to that claim. And I do think that she doesn't really care about the people of Gaza, and I feel like she's just exploiting this issue to push broader conspiracies about Jewish people because she doesn't like Jewish people. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. So she's condemned Israel's genocide in Gaza and said that there's no justification for genocide, and she's also vocalized opposition to taxpayer money going to Israel. And I mean, if that was all that she said, then sure, she'd likely still ruffle feathers at the Daily Wire, but that's not all that she said. She said some really fucked up things. As Variety explains, Owens has used her perch at Daily Wire to deliver commentary perceived as anti-Semitic. She recently said on her Daily Wire show that a Jewish gang in Hollywood is doing horrific things and suggested Jews are going to be blamed if TikTok is banned. And earlier this week, she liked an ex post that promoted an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory that Jews were drunk on Christian blood. Yeah, so you see what I mean, right? She didn't just criticize the Israeli government or specific actions that they took. She went full Kanye. And speaking of Kanye, she also defended him when he went full Hitler back in 2022. And that defense of Kanye caused a lot of tension between between her and Ben Shapiro, and her latest anti-Semitic remarks probably drove an even bigger wedge between her and Ben, as evidenced by the fact that she no longer is with the Daily Wire. Now, I've got to say, people like Candace Owens are extremely dangerous because she is exploiting the genocide in Gaza in order to push a harmful agenda, right? She's using this to spread conspiracy theories about all Jewish people. When Jewish people aren't responsible for the actions of the Israeli government, there are Jewish people in the United States who are speaking out saying no to the genocide, not in our name, right? And because she's doing this, that tells me she doesn't actually care about Gazans because that anti-Semitic rhetoric legitimizes cynical allegations of anti-Semitism made by genocide apologists like Ben Shapiro. So she's giving them ammunition and ascribing culpability to all Jewish people, and that is wrong. But with that being said, the Daily Wire, they've cultivated an audience of far-right fascists, many of which are actually anti-Semitic like Candace Owens, and they didn't take the news too well that Candace Owens was out at the Daily Wire. For example, here's some of the more popular responses to Boring's announcement that she was out with the company. One person said they ended their membership. Another person shared a tweet of Boring defended Candace's right to say what she wants. And I think that that's a fair point to bring up because hosts say egregious things on this network all the time. Their hosts have called for the eradication of transgenderism and even helped libs of TikTok incite bomb threats against children's hospitals. So it seems arbitrary if you're a fan of the Daily Wire to see them draw this line at anti-Semitism when the network regularly traffics in all kinds of hate all the time. In in fact, they all know that Candace Owens was brought on to say terrible things about black people that the hosts felt like they couldn't say because they would be called racist. And she did just that. The things that she said about George Floyd in particular are genuinely despicable. So people are now calling the Daily Wire hypocrites because they can't understand why all of a sudden this one kind of hate is unacceptable. And I don't think they're wrong to think that the network is hypocritical. But Candace Owens is trying to shift the narrative away from her anti-Semitism in an effort to turn this into a conversation about her being the one who's the victim, specifically because she's a Christian. And for some reason, it's working. And the reason why it's working is because I think she's a much more skilled propagandist than a lot of the folks at The Daily Wire. So let me try to explain but I mean, you'll have to bear with me because if you're not terminally online, this is going to be kind of difficult to understand. But basically, when she first denounced Israel's genocide back in November of last year, Ben Shapiro publicly criticized her, but she didn't respond directly to him. Rather, she just made a cryptic tweet about him while not explicitly naming him, as Mediaite points out. But she says a bunch of incoherent religious bullshit and follows up with a Christ is King. And that was in November of last year. Now, in the aftermath of her breakup with the Daily Wire that took place again, she made an insufferably long post implying that she's being 
persecuted for being a Christian, which in turn prompted people to show solidarity with Candace by tweeting Christ as King, including people like alleged sex trafficker Andrew Tate and Nazi influencer Sneeko. Now, that phrase was used so much it ended up trending, to which Candace Owens responded, saying, Christ as King is trending worldwide. The media's attempt to cross him again has failed. Now, people like Andrew Tate and Sneeko don't subscribe to Christianity. They're both Muslims, in fact. So they, along with a lot of other people, were using Christ as King not as a celebration of Jesus or because they love Jesus, but because it was seen as a coded fuck you at worst to Jewish people and at best specifically geared towards Ben Shapiro, because that's the way that Candace Owens seemingly used it in response to criticism that she received from Ben Shapiro back in November. Now, the phrase Christ is king in a vacuum, obviously, isn't inherently anti-Semitic, even though it is factually incorrect, since God is not real. But neo-Nazis don't usually say what they mean. They often use coded words and dog whistles to communicate. I mean, they turned an innocuous meme like Pepe the Frog into an alt-right symbol. So anything can technically be turned into a bigoted dog whistle depending on the context within which it's used. And Jeremy Boring made this exact point and caused an absolute shitstorm on the right as a result. So Jason Whitlock, a Christian conservative commentator, tweeted, I'm asking this sincerely. I'm a student of life. I'm not that smart. There are many things I do not know. This is a sincere question without snark or sarcasm or trolling. How is saying Christ is king anti-Semitic? When did this become true? Is it true? Somebody's clearly not as terminally online as they should be. Now, I think there are a lot of people like Jason who just didn't know why people were saying it was anti-Semitism, but Jeremy Boring responded saying, how is saying Christ is king anti-Semitic? The same way anything becomes anti-Semitic, when it is used for the purpose of expressing anti-Semitism. It's like asking, how does a shovel become a murder weapon when it is used to murder someone? This isn't hard. A shovel is not innately a murder weapon. Saying Christ is king is not innately anti-Semitic. It's all about how a thing is used. He later adds, additionally, saying Christ is king for an evil purpose, like using it as a weapon to express your hatred or disdain for Jews, is a grave sin. It plainly violates the third commandment, thou shall not carry forth the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Now, in response, reactionaries and neo-Nazis had a pretty predictable response. For example, Christian conservative dingbat Melanie Mack and neo-Nazi Jake Shields both responded by just saying Christ is king again. We know what they mean by it. Right-wing grifter Kim Iverson said that the statement was anti-Christian, and blue check user DV said that this is leftist logic, while the Blaze TV's Lauren Chen was trying to nuance troll him, I guess, by implying that he didn't think it was possible to use the term in a non-anti-Semitic way, even though he didn't say that if you read the full post or even what we read. And the quivering responded by suggesting that the Daily Wire was going to war with Christians. So on one hand, it's frustrating to see right-wingers deliberately misconstrue the point that he's trying to make because they do that all the time to people on the left. But on the other hand, the Daily Wire has purposefully cultivated a far-right evangelical audience that includes a lot of Nazis. So to me, this is a matter of them having to lie in the bed that they made for themselves, right? You can't complain about stray cats coming around your house after you leave a bowl of food out for them every single night. They're going to keep coming if you keep feeding them. And that's exactly what the Daily Wire has been doing for years with their neo-Nazi and fascistic audience. They thought that the Nazis who watched them would just be satisfied with the racism and transphobia. But unsurprisingly, they're also pretty thirsty for anti-Semitism too. Hmm, who would have thought Nazis also like anti-Semitism? Interesting. So now the Daily Wire is in a position where they're at odds with the Nazis that they've pandered to, which is a pretty sizable portion of their audience audience and it's not going well obviously now another daily wire host condemned candace owens and as you watch his comments here try to guess what the like to dislike ratio is but when you start saying things like some of those books hitler burned weren't so bad you know i i was shocked this is something candace actually said i was surprised to learn that the books hitler was burning or the nazis were burning they weren't they weren't good books they were bad books they were socialist books <laughs> so so, you know, they bur <laughs> that's true. <laughs> burning the book is the, the act of a savage, first of all. And when you start with burning books, you start burning people. When you start saying that, you're saying, that's a dog whistle. I'm sorry. I know it's a leftist phrase. I know they use it, you know, randomly with anything you say. I understand all of that. Still, still, the, the, the depredations of the Nazis against the Jews are one of the most well-documented recorded 
atrocities in human history because they're Germans. They're Germans. They keep records. They keep very good records. We know these things happen. They weren't burning books. You know, they, they also hated Einstein because his science was Jewish science. They hated Mendelssohn, one of their great composers, because his music was Jewish music. That's the way they thought. There, it's lunacy. It's lunacy to think that way. So when you start to say, well, you know, some of those books they burned are, you know, are bad books. I'm sorry. That's a, that's a oh, dog whistle. When you retweet a post saying a Jew is drunk on Christian blood, which goes back, as I'm sure you know, to old blood libel that, that you know, Jews eat Christian children, you know, that's a, a dog whistle. When you start to refer in this kind of clever way to a certain group of people in Hollywood corrupting blacks and killing Michael Jackson, you're, you're not allowed to then put on an innocent look and say, well, I'm just saying there's certain people, just a like few, you know, it's not, I'm just saying, you know, you're messing with us. You're messing with us, and everyone knows it, and no one is fooled except those people who want to pretend to be fooled because they hate the Jews. The biggest truth that Candace told in that way that I find, again, and this is not personal animus toward her, but I find difficult to excuse this when anybody does it. The, the tr truth that hid wickedness that I thought was the most wicked truth to use was the truth that Christ is king. Okay, let me try to help you out, Andrew. First and foremost, dog whistle isn't a leftist phrase, and that's just a stupid thing to say. Second of all, banning books is just one step removed from burning books, which your side is currently doing. The rhetoric on your network towards trans people is eerily similar to the rhetoric Nazis use to describe Jewish people. So this right here is the fascist audience that you all cultivated. And the fact that you have to now explain why Nazis are bad to your audience kind of shows that maybe you've pandered to the wrong people. Is it going to trigger any introspection whatsoever? Probably not. Now, Candace Owens, to make this more interesting, she joined the Daily Wire in 2021, which is two years after she made this comment about Hitler. When you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in at least in America, is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. I just can't believe that that person turned out to be anti-Semitic. Who would have thought? You can never trust anyone nowadays, right? Now, of course, the response to Andrew was exactly what you'd expect. The like to dislike ratio was nearly 50%, and the comments were pretty anti-Semitic, especially towards Ben Shapiro. Christ is king. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And this person is saying that, and they obviously mean Jewish people too. Another person says, Ben doesn't need to be told Christ is king because he's a Jew. He needs it the same reason we all need it, because it's true and faith in him is the only way to heaven. In other words, Jewish people aren't going to go to heaven. Also, Christ is king and it's not optional. He doesn't want Ben to stay Jewish. None of what I just said is anti-Semitism. It's just having a view on what's true. Some more. Andrew, I love your show, but you totally lost me when you suggested that Ben should not accept Jesus because it would devastate his family. Another person. I'm not sure where you're getting this idea that Candace is engaging in anti-Semitism. I mean, he just gave you several examples. That term is thrown around willy-nilly the same way that racism and bigotry are thrown around by people who claim such about everyone whom they disagree. It's ridiculous. Jews can't even spell it correctly without concerns of being flagged, and Israel are not above criticism. Notice how he he did a little switcheroo there and said uh, Jews and Israel as if they're all to blame for what Israel is doing. And this person says, I do not hate Jews, but the way Shmuley treated her was utterly disgusting. Hmm. Major yikes. So this backlash comes because his own audience feels betrayed because after pushing intolerance for years, their audience feels like this is a 180 because all of a sudden they're pushing tolerance when they were told that intolerance is fine. In fact, it's good, actually. I mean, they've been conditioned to be hateful, intolerant bigots, and now they're revolting because the Daily Wire is telling them the opposite. Well, of course that's happening. Now, aside from that, these criticisms from the Daily Wire of Candace Owens, uh, and specifically her use of Christ as King, is further evidence to her fans that Christians really are being persecuted, and can you guess whose fault they think it is? They think it's the fault of Jewish people, and that she's right about that too. So Candace Owens might be ghoulish, but she's a master of deflection and obfuscation, and she's a pretty good propagandist. And even though her opposition to Israel's genocide is good, she's opposed to it for all the wrong reasons. If you're going to oppose a genocide, you should do it 
because human life is precious, and that's what you should base your opposition to genocide on, not because it's an opportunity for you to disseminate conspiracy theories about an entire group of people that you already fucking hate. It's despicable. But things are getting really ugly between her and the Daily Wire, and even Dave Rubin tried to jump in, who is a former friend of Candace Owens, and he talked about how she gave him the cold shoulder after she defended Kanye. Uh, first off, um, the cleanest way I can tell you this is that when, when Candace started getting real famous and the Kanye thing happened and everything else, one day out of nowhere, she unfollowed me on Twitter. So I had sort of helped her get to a certain extent. And then she unfollowed a bunch of people. Like she had a bunch of people that she followed and then, and then she unfollowed me. So I took that sort of as like a mark of just like, and I'm not trying to create shit here. I really am not actually. Uh, but I just kind of took that of a mark of like, oh, like, there is a limit to our friendship, like it was sort of transactional for you to a degree. Then, I don't know, a couple of years ago, she changed her phone number and didn't tell me, uh, So I, and I needed to contact her about something, and I had to go around away. So it's like, I don't know, if, if you were friends with someone, would you be doing that? But again, I'm not doing this for drama purposes. I'm doing this to clean up some of the nonsense around this. Now, have I agreed with her positions on Israel and Gaza? Obviously not, obviously not. She's gotten into it uh, with me on Twitter a couple times. I, I would say in a fairly disrespectful way when, it, when if you are friends with someone, you can take it offline and deal with it that way. So that's really what I meant by that. Um, by the way, I take no pleasure in that. I, I'm just telling you the reality as it is. I would also say that, you know, one of the things that I think helped me stay sane throughout all this, because, you know, friends come and go and, fame comes and go and clicks come and go and all of that stuff is that I have friends from before all this. Bless his heart. He still thinks that he's relevant enough to insert himself into this conversation. <laughs> I had to humor him, right? Just hear him out. Nobody cares though, Dave. Now, in conclusion, multiple things can be true at once. Ben Shapiro and folks at The Daily Wire do support genocide, and even though Candace Owens does not, she's still very much anti-Semitic. But that doesn't mean that people who are opposed to genocide are also anti-Semitic, because most reasonable people can differentiate between the actions of a single government and an entire group of people. And just because genocide apologists often equate all criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism doesn't mean that anti-Semitism doesn't exist, because it does, and it's a very huge problem. It's getting worse, in fact, based on data. It is a very serious issue. And last but certainly not least, Christ is not king because Jesus is a fictional character that was the result of plagiarized work of earlier deities. If you don't believe me, look that shit up. But look, it's fine if you want to base your entire life on that story and if you want to love Jesus, that's fine. But you don't have the right to demand that all others do the same and subscribe to your religion as well. And that's what the folks at The Daily Wire, their audience in particular, want. They want everyone to subscribe to Christianity, including Ben Shapiro. So hopefully, you know, The Daily Wire hosts acknowledge the dangers of pandering to Christian nationalists and fascists and evangelicals because now it's being used against them. And final point, let them fight. You know, I was going to say it, but that's the most important point. Let them fight because when fascists fight each other, that is a win for humanity. Penis and balls, vagina. Pe pe penis and balls, vagina. Pe 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 word and balls, vagina. Pe 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 word and balls, vagina. Ass, gum. Ass, gum, ass, gum, vagina. She stroked my face with the vagina. She stroked my penis and balls.